I believe there's a good chance this is going to be a bigger election than 1994. Um, I was with a young African-American professional woman yesterday from Los Angeles who said, we have to reach out to every community in this country because we're going to discover in every community a, a fundamental repudiation of socialism and secularism and the kind of politics that, Ob that Obama represents. The Obama, Pelosi, Reid team is a direct threat to America's future and needs to be defeated. We have an opportunity to go into every neighborhood, into every church, into every synagogue, and candidly into every mosque. And we have an opportunity to say to people who value and love America that there is a future that makes us once again the most successful, the most prosperous, the most powerful, and the freest country. But that future begins with repudiating Obama, Pelosi, and Reid, and sending the signal. There's going to be election after election after election this fall, where with a little extra effort, a little extra donation, a little extra, uh, a few more emails, a little more Twitter, a little more YouTube, a little more Facebook, we're going to win. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a Jersey girl from the Jersey Shore, born and raised, and I'm here to tell you as a mayor of a shore town that it's hurricane season at the Jersey Shore, and I've just blown myself down here to D.C., and I'm supposed to speak to you about cleaning up Washington. Let me tell you, Hurricane Anna is on the way. Yeah. By the people, to me, is the most important part. You see, our government does not work properly without all of you. And anyone you see sitting in this audience today with a t-shirt with my last name on it, that's part of how we clean Washington up. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's the way we do it. Yeah. This is the Constitution of the United States of America, not an outdated document. Not an outdated document, not a piece of artwork, law. Law, ladies and gentlemen, the supreme law of the land. I'm just going to give you two short ones. This one's Thomas Jefferson. I think we remember him. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience, people of good conscience like yourselves, to remain silent. What's he telling us? Don't keep your mouth shut no matter how much they tell you to. Open your mouth, say what's on your mind. Elect your representatives, hold them to what you believe in. And the last one I'll give you is from Benjamin Franklin. I think we remember him. Only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. Why is that? That is because we're human, ladies and gentlemen. We're human. We're not perfect. Not one of us is, nor will we ever be. And as long as power corrupts, and will do so absolutely, we have to hold on to virtue. We have to hold on to our moral values. We need to ensure that we are in line with the higher power that we believe in. I call him God, and I'm not ashamed to talk about him. He's a center in my life. He drives my life, my plans are his. I'm open, show me the way. And I believe we all need to live our lives that way. And we're, when we're working in elected office, it's more important that we do that than even in our own lives, because we're responsible for the effect upon so many others. You see, every Tuesday night, in the Keyport IHOP, at What's the Scoop in Metuchen, New Jersey, and at the VFW in Asbury Park, New Jersey, Almost 200 people show up every week wearing t-shirts with my name, carrying bumper stickers and signs and literature. 
See, that's the strategy briefing. We don't have a kitchen cabinet. We've got a mob. And it's a really well-behaved, well-mannered mob. But they show up every Tuesday in those three locations to get their marching orders for the week. And then on Saturdays, at about 8 a.m., when most people are still rolling around in their beds, my people are on their second cup of coffee in a parking lot somewhere in New Jersey, where we go out and knock on, oh, sometimes five or 6,000 doors. That's how you win an election, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm gonna tell you, my inspiration comes from these people. Because ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just running to win a seat and replace the most liberal Democrat, liberal progressive Democrat in the nation with a pro-life conservative woman. No, that's not what this is about. This is about the people of District 6 standing up like they did in the primary, which they won by 84 votes, and I'm honored to be part of it. It's about those people taking their government back, and ladies and gentlemen, you can do the same thing. That's how you clean Washington up. Thank you very much. Less than eight weeks. And it's really important that we have the right mindset as we go into this. It's not just to, we're, we're, remember who our target is. Our target are not people who are already with us, they're people who are up in the air. It's not people who have, share our ardent passion for getting the thing done right, it's people who are trying to figure it out. The topic was resolved, Obamacare should be repealed. I got up there and shared with what you can expect to be the normal Yale political audience, <laughs> these facts and figures, and then they voted. And the Yale Political Union voted to uphold the resolution that resolved Obamacare should be repealed. If we can convince Yale, we can convince America. It's not up to our candidates alone. Now they got the fancy TV ads, they got the focus groups, they got the micro-targeting, they got the polls. Some of them are going to make use of that marvelous invention of Al Gore, the internet. <laughs> got to admit that it's better than that other thing he invented, global warming. But, but it's not up to them at the end of the day. It's up to us. There's a wonderful letter written in 1840 by the lanky lawyer in Sangamon County, Illinois, to his campaign committee. He said, make a perfect list of the voters, ascertain with certainty for whom they will vote, have the undecideds talked to by someone they hold in confidence, and on election day, make certain that every Whig is brought to the polls. Now, Abraham Lincoln was a pretty tremendous president. But he was also an incredibly able, practical politician, and I always thought the most important part of his letter was point number three, have the undecided talked to by someone they hold in confidence. And guess what? For some people, that's you. The people you worship with, people you socialize, people, uh, socialize with, people you know, people you live in your neighborhood. Heck, for some of you, there are even family members who will take your word. And it's up to us to do everything we can in as well organized a way as possible to have the undecideds talked to by someone they hold in confidence on behalf of the great cause and the great principles and the, and the, and the great importance of this year's elections. Thanks for having me here today, and may God continue to bless our great